This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to continue our discussion on transitions by talking about creating custom transitions inside a Media Composer. Not only am I going to show you how simple they are to create but I'm going to show you how you can take them and use them very quickly and easily across many different transition points inside of your Media Composer timeline as well as being able to access them in other projects literally with the click of a mouse. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, that's enough of an introduction. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. To create our transition effect, we're going to need two clips to create that transition. And I've picked a couple clips here that I think are going to work well. We have our actress blowing a kiss to the camera and we have our saxophone player that's in a similar environment. So I think this transition is going to work pretty well. And let's get it set up. Now I've already put in an in point for our saxophone player here and let's take our actress and I've already set an in and out point. Let's just double check. Pretty much after she blows the kiss, I want to add about three seconds to this shot and that's going to work itself out pretty good. So let's take this clip. I'm going to drop it into a new timeline. Now by default, a couple audio tracks are added. So I'm just going to delete them. And I want this clip up on video layer number two. Okay. And let's take our saxophone player. Now we're going to want to put him in about three seconds back from where we were. So let's go back three seconds here. There we go. Now we're gonna to wanna to move ahead one frame because by going back three seconds, it's always gonna add that last frame on to your duration. So as you can see at the top, three seconds and one frame. So we're gonna mark this right here as our in point. We got our saxophone player ready to go and let's drop him in just like that. Now let's define the range that we want to have our transition take place and we're going to do that by simply adding an edit to our outgoing clip on video track number two. Now the effect that we're going to use to create our transition is the 3D warp tool. Now we're going to get again more in depth into this tool in a later lesson as well as into getting into things like keyframes and such and the like. So bear with me and just follow along because once you see how simple it is to get started with this effect, I guarantee you it's going to be your go-to effect all the time. Okay, now let's find it. Now you're going to notice that I already have it typed in here from when I was using it previously. I'm just going to clear that because we can find it a couple ways. We can search for it inside of all of the different uh, effects categories here. Or what I can do is just simply type in, much like I had before, 3D Warp. And you'll see it appear right there. Let's take it, drag it, and drop it onto our shot. And what I think we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a scale effect down to about the halfway point of the shot. And then we're going to have the clip move off to the left hand side. Now this is a great way that you can get in, you know, not only create one transition, but literally 10, 20, as many transitions as you want by simply changing the direction or the scaling that your shot is taking to create a new look every time. Okay, let's step into effects mode so that we can start to create our look now. Let's come in and let's activate scaling and let's activate the position parameters and scaling is what we're going to deal with first. Now a lot of people you'll see will add their keyframes right over here inside of the composer window. I don't like to do that because once you click the keyframe button here, it's going to add keyframes to every parameter inside of the effects window and I don't want to do that. I just want to get in and be specific about what parameters I want to apply the keyframes to. In this case, I want to add a keyframe to scaling. There we go. And let's come down to where I'm just going to roughly guess about the halfway point, which is probably about here. And at this point, we're going to have our scaling go down to 50%. Okay, very nice. And at this point, what we want to do is have our clip transition off to the left. So we're going to come down, we're going to add a keyframe. And now I'm right clicking on the actual parameter that I want to apply the keyframe to so that I get the keyframe menu. I'm going to say add keyframe just like such. We're going to come down to the end again, right click add keyframe. And I'm just going to slide this shot 
right out of the frame just like that. And basically what I've done is created a transition effect just like that. Now again, we're not going for anything complicated. You see how that works. But what we have the ability to do now that's very cool is if I wanted to come in and let's just create a new bin called effects. Okay. And let's take this shot or this effect and let's drag it and drop it into this bin. And I'm going to rename this effect. Let's call this scale transition exit left. Okay. Because what we could do is we could have it exit right, exit top, exit bottom. You see how that goes. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm quickly just going to create a new timeline. Okay. And we'll just delete this timeline. Nothing fancy. And I'm just going to pick a couple other clips at random here. Sure, we'll have our businesswoman here. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we'll take this. We'll drop this in. I'm just going to drop the whole clip in here. And again, much like I did before, we're going to minus three seconds. Now, again, this could be anything. It could be minus two. You get the way that that works. Okay, we're going to, again, position her clip up on video track number two. Let's just delete our audio here. And let's grab another clip. Let's grab, sure, let's grab this guy here. Okay. And we're going to have him start right about there. We're going to drop him in on video one again, much like we did before. All I'm going to do is just hit the add edit button. I'm now going to take this transition effect. I'm going to drag it and drop it. And it's now literally ready to go with the drag of the mouse and by hitting the play button. And of course, if we decided that we want this clip to be a different duration, like maybe a little bit shorter, let's just jump into trim mode here. We'll just shorten this up a little bit. I can now hit play. And there's a bit of a faster transition. So you can see how easily you can get in and tailor these effects however you might need them. Now, let's take this one step further. You know that you're going to be creating a go-to bin that's going to have all kinds of transitions. It's going to have effects presets and things like that in it. And you're going to want to access it in every project. Most people think, OK, Kev, well, you'll just open that bin in every project you get to. No, we're not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close the effects bin so that it saves. I'm going to select that bin and I'm going to navigate up to the bin drop down and I'm going to add this bin to the favorite bins. Once I do, a new folder has appeared at the top and if I twirl it down, you're going to notice that that bin has now doubled up. But what's important to keep in mind is that it's doubled up because I'm in the project that that bin was created in. If I now step into any other project, Obviously, the favorite bins is going to appear at the top, and inside of that is going to be that effects bin that I can now easily access in any project I'm working on my system to have access to all of your effects and transitions, literally with a drag of the mouse and a click of the play button. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.